Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I wanted to come and have a bit of a play, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Whether I wanted to have a go at doing an art journal or a canvas or just have a general kind of experimental play. And then I thought that I might have a little play in my uh, little tag journal that I've created. But I've run out of tags. So I've created one from a piece of mount board that I have um, that I picked up from my local craft store a while ago. So I've used one of the acetate front covers um, as a template and just cut it out of that black mount board. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera and then I'll talk you through what I'm going to do for this little bit of a project. So I have my tag which is not being cut out to the best of my ability. I've actually tried to cut it out with scissors. It's a bit too thick to be cut with scissors so I've kind of ragged it a little bit at the edges but that's okay because it's going to be a bit grungy anyway. And I have this image that I have in my stash. Um, it's a, a Dover image and, <clears throat> uh, and I printed it out and it's been kicking around in my stash for quite some time so I'm just going to cut it out because this is what I want to use for my main focal point on this tag. Now my original idea was that I wanted to create some kind of two-tone effect um, using modelling paste and paint on this tag and then grunge up this uh, little rose image. You know, scruff up the edges, tear it, grunge it up with a little bit of um, brown aging and foxing and place it over the two-tone texture on there. A kind of fairly simplistic mixed media project uh, and I was or my brain was telling me that I wanted to use blue um, turquoise blue um, for the background and then mix some of this with some modeling paste which would then lighten it and then put that through a stencil to create that two-tone effect with the stencil um, but after looking at the pink on here I don't think I'm going to bother with the blue at all so instead I've pulled out these two colors from my my um, inexpensive paint collection. Now these are artiste paints from Do Crafts here in the UK. Um, this one's metallic and this one isn't. But the lighter one, I was going to mix that with the modelling paste, but I think I'm going to do it the other way around now. I think I'm going to do <coughs> the darker colour, yeah actually the darker colour on the background and then mix this with the modelling paste. Yes, yeah, so you've got the lighter over the dark and where um, the parts of the stencil that I'm going to use which is also going to be this one which is a rose stencil from Indigo Blue um, it's still going to keep that metallic -y effect um, on the paint on the background of the of the tag so hopefully but I also will cluster a few other bits and pieces like some book text and uh, maybe dictionary pages and that kind of stuff. Took a few ephemera bits and pieces behind this once I've distressed it. So I might as well just get on and start. So first of all I'm going to paint the background of the tag. Now I'm deliberately leaving it black. So I'm going to leave some of that black showing through at the edges. I'm going to need a lot more than that, aren't I? <clears throat> That's more like it. And obviously I will be um, drying between coats. So I'm going to leave that kind of blackness showing through. And I want that metallic -y kind of effect coming in. So th this paint is called Metallic Rose. So it will fit with that image. Not that it really matters what it's called. It could have been called Candy Cane. It still would have made a difference with the colour. Okay, first coat. Okay, so that's now 
dry and you can see the metallic sheen on there rather lovely so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some modeling paste this is the Windsor and Newton Galleria modeling paste and I'm going to take some of that out of the tub and just daub that down onto my craft mat and then taking that blush pink acrylic paint I'm going to tint the modeling paste now I know it's only going to be subtle but that's fine it will make it slightly runnier doesn't matter if you get a little bit of that darkness in there nice kind of baby pink that modeling paste now so I know I'm going to be using the spatula again in a second but I just want to clean it off so I know I'm going to start off with a smooth blade bring that in and then I want to try and get it so that I've got decent sized roses the larger ones here so there's like four I'm trying to keep it out of that mess there okay so that should do it so I'll try and start bringing that through I'm not particularly bothered if there's some scrabbly edges to it. It wants to be, I want it to be, um, I don't want it to be perfect. There you go, that's the words I'm looking for. I don't want it to be perfect. I just want it to have that kind of half finished, almost wrecked feel to it. So I don't want perfect edges I don't want perfection so with any luck that should be all I need here we go so just lift that off and then wipe the edges so we have pink on the pink lovely and I need to clear this up so I'll get this all washed down and then um, and I'll join you when everything is all clean and tidy and there's no danger of me putting my elbow in this stuff here so I'll be right back so that's now dry enough and cool enough to work on as you can see I've still kept that metallic in between so that's good I have now some burnt umber <coughs> or any kind of dark brown paint will do now all I'm going to do now is just put some of that on my craft mat. I have um, an old sponge and I'm just going to pick up some of that paint and then just lightly go around and grunge up and add some of that brown all the way around the edges. Which is also going to hide those raw white edges of the tag but also just bring in a little bit of grunge and dirt maybe I just need to cut those bits off first that might make it a bit better now of course I could do this with um, ink the Ranger um, archival inks I nearly forgot the name of them then but as I'm using paints I'm using paints so it's just one of those different 
ways to do stuff, which you get similar sort of results with just by using different resources. So there we go. Just go around bringing some of that grungy brown in. all the way around. Just for a bit more authenticity, let's bring some of that in. <laughs> authenticity, he says. Where do we find these words from? a little bit of distress. There we go. Cool. It's kind of starting to unify. Now by adding that brown on, that black, it kind of brings that black into the design of the tag then. So it's not something completely, you know, out of left field that you weren't you know, that looks out, out of place. It all looks as though it's all part and parcel and deliberate, which it is, but it just kind of unifies it together a little bit. So I just need to get that dried and then we can do the same thing with another colour that I want to introduce. Okay, so that's all now dry, as you can see. So that brown has kind of started to um, bring everything together, like I said. So I want to add in an extra colour now. I want to bring in some sage green. Now, any kind of, um, let's say, greyish green would work well on this, or any kind of um, green that's um, not brilliant, so like grass green, if you like, would work quite nicely. So I'm just wanting to just add a few touches of the green, almost like a, a patina. But what this does is, well, it will um, it will help to kind of unify the way the tag looks when we introduce the green from there. It's not going to be completely left field again. So we're introducing some green into the background, even if it's only a light touch. You know, that's going to fade away disappear but just even if you introduce you know the colour in smaller um, portions or proportions to the main colours which is the pink even just little highlighted accent colours work quite well And I think that's all I'm going to do. Maybe just a tad more there. I think that'll do it. That will do it, he says, adding a little bit more. T typical, can't leave well enough alone. But I think we all suffer from that. Thing is, when it starts to dry, it goes a little bit paler. So you think, oh, I'll just add a bit more. I'll just add a bit more. I'll just add a bit more. Which means you could have probably could have afforded to go a little bit heavier in the first place. Couldn't you, Mike? That'll do. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get that dried, and then we can start working on our cluster. 
So I've put that to one side now and I just want to work on this for the moment. So I want to try and just scruff up the edges. And you can use the blade of a pair of scissors if you haven't got one of these scruffing tools just as easily. As long as you're careful. Now this image has been printed off using an inkjet printer so won't be water stable but that's fine. So I'm going to use um, archival inks over the top and it doesn't matter if I crease this because it just adds to the effect, the aging effect. I'm actually going to tear that a little bit. Curl that corner in. A bit grungy. Grunge. It's one of those words that sounds exactly what it like it what it means. as well. Okay, so now we've created snow. Throw that on the carpet for the cleaner. Okay. And then I'm bringing in my potting soil archival link. Not sure whether that's the right foam for it, but this one looks like it could be. Let's grab a piece of scrap. That'll do. That'll do. And then I can just start to add in a little bit of that aging. Okay, so that's added in a little bit of dirt and grunge. What I also need to do is I want to bring in just a touch of that green paint from the outside that we had as well. Just a few light touches. Use it out a little bit. Just add a little bit there on those tears. That will do. Okay, just give that a quick blast. That will do. And then I have got a sheet of 
um, book text here that I want to use. So I think about there. And then take some off there. about there. I'm not only doing this, I'm not using any other tools apart from my fingers. And then about, about there. That should do it. Lovely. Very nice. So again, I need to grab, be done with it, there it is. Just add a little bit of grunge to the edges there. Just go all the way around. Doesn't matter if it curls or rips a little bit more, it just adds to the effect, just like so. do for that because if you wanted to you can just drag a little bit of that paint just add a little touch give it a quick blast okay so now we have those like so Just want one or two other little pieces. So let's see. This is, or these are, the Tim Holtz Botanicals Ephemera. So what I think would be nice that might work. Maybe something a little bit pinkish. No. Too much. Too much, too much, too much. A small kind of got the same size, a bit smaller, that might actually work better. Come on. Actually, mm, might be better yeah I think that and then let me see yep I think that as well and I just want to use one tiny tiny little butterfly. That'll do. Okay, so I'll just pop that to one side and then what I want to do with these again is I just want to start grunging them up. Just to add a little bit of that brown to it. Now these are laminated, they've got like a, a, a 
glossy coating on. That's why using the archival ink is perfect because it will cover. If you try to use a distress ink, I think don't think it would actually take. And then the butterfly. So that's then got rid of that white edge around there. But while I've still got the paintbrush, just see if I can add. Very subtle. Just to kind of turn all that together. Okay, I think we're ready to start building our little cluster. So, which means I need to get rid of all this horrible mess on here. So I'm gonna have a quick tidy up and then I will be right back. Okay, so ready to start adding my bits and pieces. So for this, I'm just gonna use everyday glue. So this is this the Tombow Mono Aqua liquid glue. And I'm just going to drop that down. Gives me a little bit of wiggle room before it grabs. And then this one, see, not quite as high as that. Let's bring it down a little bit. Yeah, that's more like it. And then I'm going to put this about there. Before I do that, I want to add this piece. I've decided not to use those other two pieces. I've decided not to use these two pieces. Um, sometimes you know, when you actually lay them down just to test them out, it's too much, or they're too big, or it don't quite fit. And that's the same for this. So I'm going to put that just there. And then this is just going to go over the top. I'm not putting the glue right to the edges, so that if I want to, I can still add nearly upside down. I can still add something underneath if I want to, but the reason I've got that, um, the tears and the, the grunge like kind of the scruff in is so make sure that it stays kind of raised. See if I have now tried to add this, it would just be too big. It's just too big. That's quite nice just there. A bit of glue just to hold that down there. I like the fact that there's a little bit of pink in these as well, so that all kind of brings it all together. And then just to finish off, um, I'm just going to run a little bead of glue along there. And then I'm going to drop that butterfly just there like so. And then if I want to, I can just add a little bit more glue just to hold everything down. Like so. I'll just leave that to sit for a second. Okay, so that's pretty much grabbed now. And I've got these Tim Holtz clippings stickers and I found one um, that just says little things. 
and I've just quickly um, run my blending foam over the top of that potting soil and I'm just going to add that down here so they are self-adhesive so and I think that pretty much does it all I have to do now is just to punch a hole in the top which I can do later and there one pretty little tag <laughs>